Hey folks, welcome to Frankly Vegas, where we report on our experiences just as you'd experience them. Our goal is to experience places anonymously so that we can report back on them honestly. And today we're going to discuss our Valentine's Day experience at Partage. Amid the choices for French haute cuisine in Vegas from Michelin starred giants like Robuchon and Guy Savoy, plus other standouts such as Picasso, Le Cirque, or Bardot on the Las Vegas Strip. Partage is often mentioned in the same breath, but also makes its mark due to its unique location. Tucked away in Chinatown, a neighborhood traditionally known for offering great value for dining options, Partage stands out in a sprawling strip mall, a setting far removed from the opulent dining rooms of the strip, sharing its space with a mix of much more casual eateries, retail stores, and wholesalers. Despite its unassuming location, Partage commands attention everywhere. A simple search online for the best French restaurants in Las Vegas on any platform, whether it's Google, social media, or YouTube, Yelp, reveals Partage among the top contenders, a testament to its fame. It's a name that resonates with both locals and visitors alike. The team at Partage has a distinguished background, chefs with experience in Michelin starred kitchens, accolades from reality food shows, and several awards and accolades. This pedigree sets the stage for our high expectations, including for ourselves. Yet, we do have a track record for having those expectations shattered. So let's see if this is the case with our evening at Partage. Upon entering Partage, the immediate greeting by our server, a recent arrival from Nice, France, signaled the start of what promised to be an immersive dining experience. You can sense the very essence of France here, not just in the accents of the staff, but in the very soul of the restaurant. A testament to the founder's Michelin star-studded background. The menu was quite straightforward. The first page told the story of the team behind Partage, followed by a page with the details for the tasting menu on Valentine's Day. Then there's a few pages showcasing their wine list, followed by a cocktail page. Before we go into more detail with the wine list and tasting menu, feel free to hit pause button so you can read the wine list and menu better. The wine list is broken down by Alsace, Then here's their selection of Burgundy Reds, which is from Pinot Noir Grapes. And then here's their selection of Burgundy Whites, which are from Chardonnay Grapes. Here's what they have from the Loire Valley. And then here's what they offer from the North Rhone Valley. Then there's the South Rhone Valley. Next we have Bordeaux Left Bank, which we find Cabernet Sauvignon blends. Bordeaux Right Bank, which primarily consists of Merlot red blends. And then there's Champagne. Here's our list of cocktails with notes on which ones are favorites of the team behind Partage. A nice touch. In a past life of mine, it would have been very difficult to avoid picking one of these. Partage also offers a few mocktails, all of them which sound zesty and refreshing. Typically, Partage offers three levels of prefix menus. A five course meal starting at $110, a seven course menu for $140, and nine course affair for $175. The only menu that Partage offered on Valentine's Day when I went was a seven course for $200, which is a 37.5% markup on top of their usual price of $140 for a seven course prefix meal. 
the wine pairing was another $130. And if you wanted plaque truffles to be added only on certain choices at the chef's discretion, that tacked on another $30. Partage also offered caviar from a variety of sources, starting with China at the low end at another $30, and goes up from there. Let's see what Partage has in store for us for my Valentine's Day dinner. The first course is an amuse-bouche trilogy. First item is the king crab with estragon sauce, Swiss chard tempura. Coming in second is smoked paprika and espalette pepper breaded frog leg with pearl tapioca risotto. The final item of the trilogy is the coral pasta carbonara, cured egg yolk in soy sauce, uni served in eggshell. Course two is a tuna and scallop carpaccio. Course three is white asparagus, cured salmon with salmon roe. Course four is corvina, beet puck filled with white beet. Course five is a beef course consisting of domestic wagyu beef tenderloin, red ravioli onion hibiscus, white ravioli foie gras. Course six is fresh goat cheese with cranberry coulis, flour salad, and French baguette. Course seven is the final dessert course to finish off the tasting menu with exotic fruit pavlova, lime gel, French meringue, vanilla mousse. All right, let's get started with discussing the first course, which consisted of three parts. The king crab with an estragon sauce, which is French for tarragon sauce, and Swiss chard tempura was a medley of flavors and textures. The crab's freshness was top-notch, freshly firm and sweet with a tad of saltiness of the ocean, perfectly complemented by the light, airy crispness of the Swiss chard tempura. And being a huge fan of tarragon myself, the aromatic savory death of the tarragon sauce. This was followed by the smoked paprika and espalette pepper breaded frog leg. The frog leg, instead of usually tasting like a very fresh and firm yet moist version of chicken meat, was surprisingly tender. The breading on it was extremely fine, resembling texture from an air fryer, which isn't intended to be a dig towards it. The frog leg came with some pearl tapioca risotto, whose buttery creamy texture offered a rich yet subtle contrast. The third part of the Amuse Bouche trilogy was a coral pasta carbonara, a dish that I feel embodies the innovative spirit that Partage is striving for. Adorned with a thick, gooey cured egg yolk and delicate uni or sea urchin, this dish delivered an intense savory experience. Imagine smoky bacon, raw egg, and uni flavors all combined together. That was both rich and impeccably balanced with a slight doughy crumbliness of the pasta. The champagne pairing, chosen for its metallic and mineral notes, provided a refreshing counterpoint to the dish's savory richness. Next up is the second course, the tuna and scallop carpaccio, where you can taste the chef's dedication to freshness and quality. The seafood was so tender it nearly dissolved upon contact, melting in your mouth, and the sweetness of the scallops paired nicely with the subtle tang of the tuna. A drizzling of yuzu gave everything a zesty, refreshing feel. The addition of sesame seeds and salt grains added some crunch to the texture, punctuating some bites with bits of savory and saltiness. Now we move on to the third course, which is white asparagus and cured salmon, infused with black currant and served alongside dill macedoine mayonnaise with salmon roe. Before going into further detail about this dish, because there's quite a bit going on with this course, I'll start out by saying that the textures and flavors mesh together very nicely. The Macedoine mayonnaise consisted of green peas and finely chopped vegetables such as carrots and celery hearts dressed in a dill-infused light mayonnaise which added a velvety texture with a fresh, grassy, herbaceous undertone. Then you have roasted peanuts sprinkled on top which gave a nice crunch and a hint of nuttiness. Then there's the salmon roe which stood out for its freshness and balanced salinity, a stark contrast to the often overly salty offerings found in common sushi establishments. Describing this course feels like quite a mouthful, but everything worked together quite beautifully. Our fourth course presented the Corvina with a beet puck. The Corvina was mild and a little buttery in flavor, and the meat was nicely tender. The fish's savory crust with a dash of black salt, pepper, and chili powder imparted a deep earthy umami, while the alfalfa sprouts added a refreshing spicy note. The light silky herb coulis underneath the fish and the beet puck a creative item filled with a savory white beet inside, which pairs nicely with the subtle sweetness of beet, all went well with the fish. 
The recommended pairing was with a 2018 Central French Pinot Noir, which was the culprit of my first miss of the night. What ended up happening was that even the small sip of this Pinot Noir ended up overpowering this dish's subtle flavor profile, where I had trouble tasting anything other than the Pinot Noir. The fifth course introduced us to the domestic Wagyu beef tenderloin alongside red and white ravioli with optional shaved slices of black truffle. I had high hopes for this dish considering that it didn't seem to be too avant-garde. Unfortunately, I was shocked to be let down by the black truffle, where it tasted more like freshly cut potatoes somehow, mostly lacking the earthy, musky flavors one would expect from truffles. The tenderloin itself, while mostly tender overall, was less tender the further away from the center, but overall wasn't as tender as usually associated with the word Wagyu. On the other hand, the red onion hibiscus ravioli provided a great savory experience. However, in the case of the foie gras ravioli, my mouth struggled to identify and detect the foie gras filling. The balance between the foie gras filling and dough surrounding it seemed tilted in heavy favor of the dough, which led me to wonder if this was a miss in ideation or execution. As we neared the conclusion of our meal, the fresh goat cheese and cranberry coulis course with flour salad and French baguette arrived, with the flour salad providing floral, grassy, and potent bitter flavors, which could be potentially off-putting if you're not a fan of strong bitter flavors. The experimental playfulness continues with the tartness of the cranberries and the cranberry sauce filling the inside of the goat cheese. But that playfulness smashed into a brick wall with the mini French baguettes. That brick wall was the frustratingly tough crust on the outside of the baguettes that was very difficult to tear through, failing to meet the presumptive expectations set by the restaurant's French pedigree. I was expecting a crispy crust, a crust that's relatively light for a baguette, that's enjoyable, not something that led me to be concerned if I needed to pay my dentist a visit soon. The upside to the baguettes was that they were pleasantly yet subtly tangy and savory with a nice wheat flavor to them. And now onto the final course, an exotic fruit pavlova, which helped salvage the prior course and end the night on a high note. The meringue, encased in a white chocolate crust, had a blend of tropical fruits inside that was sublimely sweet and zesty without being overpowering. The whole ensemble was very light and airy and was easy to cut through with the side of a fork, offering a refreshing conclusion to our evening of fine French dining. The grand total for this experience was $738.16 for my table, which breaks down to nearly $370 per person. The subtotal before tax and tip was $575, including the wine pairing, black truffle add-on, and a cup of tea, which breaks down to $287.50 per person. Meanwhile, tax and the automatically included 20% gratuity made up for the remaining $163.16. For comparison, on any other day, the cost would come out to be a grand total of $536, or $268 per person, if we're assuming that the Valentine's Day markup is 37.5%, based on the price of the prefix. Throughout the evening, the service at Partage was nothing short of exemplary. The staff's attentiveness, knowledge, and genuine warmth added layers of enjoyment to our dining experience, making each course feel immersive and intimate, as if we're proactively engaged in culinary projects with the kitchen. Portion sizes and pacing were spot on, nothing we have any complaints about. Partage attests to being a testament to the art of French cuisine, executed with a passion that speaks to its founder's Michelin-starred heritage. The restaurant's commitment to authenticity, innovation, and quality can be experienced through most dishes. But it did have its flaws, from the overpowering Pinot Noir pairing with the sublime Corvina fish, to the underwhelming Wagyu beef tenderloin and the shaved black truffles, to the extremely tough crust of the baguette, and the ambiance and decor missing a couple of touches that could have rounded out an experience that would have been luxurious, elegant, and upscale without question. I just can't help but feel that with a price tag at nearly $400 per person with rounding error, or even at $260 per person without expected markups, the experience should have been within reach of excellence, if not absolutely top-notch. While I understand minor mistakes can be excused, I'm not sure if I should be more lenient if the flaws are overlooked by a team that is backed by Michelin star experience, where I assume the kitchen management and execution are mostly under their control since seating is by reservation only. 
As we all wait for the opening of Crew Partage next door, I remain curious by the promise of what's to come, making Partage a destination that, despite its occasional missteps, might be worth the visit for those in search of French culinary excellence in Vegas.